I am going to talk a little bit about marketing, and I have never really spoken to this group about marketing. We never really talked to this group about finances before either, the way Brad did um, yesterday. And this has been a production-oriented conference, but actually, if you really are wanting to be successful in your business venture, any kind of company, it isn't just production. It Obviously, there's other legs to the stool that make your company successful. And obviously, fi the financial aspect, which Brad talked about, is very important. Contracting feed is going to affect your success. But the other part of the, the stool is marketing. And um, as people have asked me about things in the farm, Increasingly, what I've done in our farm is to delegate the production and the finances of the farm and to take marketing on is my charge. This whole seminar is an aspect of marketing. I don't mean to say that I'm, you know, like putting subliminal messages in my proceedings so you all buy McFarland pheasants, but maybe i just promoting the farm as part of what we're doing. So what I'm going to talk about a little bit today is what we've done at the farm as far as a marketing plan. Um, we certainly have got involved with the so social media to an extent. Um, we have a Facebook fan page, which, Chris, where are you? Hit escape, all right, thank you. Go down to here. Chris is the one that is going to save me if this doesn't work, all right. This is our Facebook fan page. We have 993 people that have logged on saying that they are fans of our farm. Maybe some of you here who haven't become fans, we can break 1,000 today. That Chris, Chris feels we can break 1,000 today. Um, there's already a post up here, someone that works for me. Um, uh, Mary Phelan is the administrator. Um, she's put up pictures of the seminar and talks, and those are pictures right there of of this seminar. So she's already talking about the seminar on her Facebook fan page, which is great. And she is putting up information. And I am, I am skeptical how important this is to our company, but I'm trying to be, uh, to think it's a good thing to do. And I would suggest any of you that have businesses, a preserve or a, a farm, you consider doing it. There's really no cost. We don't spend any money doing this. As far as Twitter, Chris here, our, our technical, technical guy, is telling me I need to start tweeting again. We do have a Twitter account. It's Pheasant Farm, right? Pheasant Farmer. Pheasant Farmer. And he's, he's convinced me I need to start again. Um, I've been somewhat skeptical that tweeting, does anyone here tweet? Cole does. All right, well, will you follow me if I, if I tweet? Of course, absolutely. So there you go. All right, what? All right, all right. So, you know, some of us that are older can be skeptical of this, but the reality is it's really no cost. It's very low cost, and it's definitely something that I believe can help your business. I know that this statement's going to get repeated by some of the pheasant farmers that are in the audience, but I'm going to say it. I believe marketing is as important as good production methods. A great business with poor marketing is likely to fail. A poorly managed business with great marketing may survive and even prosper. Now, I know that flies in the face of some of you who I know are absolutely excellent production managers of your pheasant farm. But the reality is you can't just rely on excellent production. You have to market yourself. In fact, to the point that I'm saying that somebody that might be the best production guy, if he has poor marketing, may fail. Now, that doesn't mean that I'm putting marketing above production. In other words, I'm not saying that I'm not wanting to do a good job at our farm of production. I want to do that, too. But marketing it today is as important, I believe, as, as production. And um, I really think that you know, I'm probably kind of preaching to the choir or singing to the choir because most of you here, you are here because you are trying to get new, you're trying to do new things. You're trying to, to get out and do things better. But there's a lot of farms. Do any of you know of pheasant farms in the United States that have gone out of business in the last two years? 
you guys, how about in UK? Is that happening in UK or not? Yeah, it's definitely happening here. And um, you have to get out and market to do, to get things, to sell your birds. Um, I actually write a blog. It's a, blo a blog that I write. I've been writing it for probably a year and a half. Uh, the URL is gamebirdexpert.com. And I write, uh, here I wrote about our pheasant management seminar. It's just days away. I've talked about the excitement that I had about what we're doing here. And I have, I'm not sure how many people I have follow it, but it's quite a few. Does anybody here read my blog? Tom does? Well, okay, there's half a dozen people here. You have. And I, I try, all I just talk about, I just talk about what's going on at the farm. I don't really try to spin it anyway. I just, if there's a big storm, I take pictures of the pens all falling down, or if we have a problem, if we have something go really well, I just write about it. And the thing good about GameBirdExpert.com is that it's linked to my main website, Pheasant.com, and the traffic, the, the, the linking of the two sites helps my ranking for Pheasant.com. It helps me get my ranking of Pheasant.com up higher. In other words, if you put in the word Pheasant into Google, where do I want to come up? Front page. I want to be on the front page. And hopefully as high as possible. And what helps you get your ranking, the, what do they call that term, Chris? The, the, the thing that goes out from Google in, in the crawler or the, the search engine, but it goes out and it helps rank. It's, what does it go out and it tries to do? It looks for links. Okay. What? Okay. Yes. It, it's, you know, the, the Google software is set up that it goes out and it looks for anything it can find, and it ranks you based on how many links you have to other sites, what words you have in your sites. So cross-links, like between my blog and pheasant.com, are important. And this hardly costs me anything to do. It should, the only thing it costs me is my time to sit down and do it, which sometimes I get real lazy about. I know, Adam, you read my blog, and sometimes I, I'm pretty good about it, and then other times. I also have this set up automatically so when I put in or write, it, write a blog, it automatically, without me doing anything, posts onto Facebook on our fan page. Takes the picture, if I put a picture up there, and it just puts it right on the fan page, uh, Facebook fan page. Usually by the next day, it's up. I didn't do that, but one of the guys at the company we, we hired to help us with all of our um, web page design has linked it. So it's just a, a seamless deal. It's great. It gets the same information up. Websites, you know, maybe we, we got pheasant.com um, as our URL in 1994. Cost me 15 bucks. I sent in the application by snail mail. I sent it in the mail, and we got pheasant.com. I didn't buy it for a whole bunch of money or anything. I just was the first person that sent it in. And um, they were back in the 90s, I would give talks, and we'd talk about web pages. And people would look with me blank like looks. You know, how many people here have a web page for their farm? So now it's a different audience. Now it's not a, an audience about telling you you should have a web page, but maybe you should have more than one web page, or maybe you need to redesign it. Chris was mentioning when we were setting up things this morning. Boy, your web page looks different. We just reskinned it. We changed the whole appearance of it. We are constantly working on our web page, and by constant, I mean. I don't know, Sarah, how often do you put a banner up on the web page? Once a week? We have a, a place on our web page where she can get, Sarah can get right in and post something that's real pertinent, like we have some extra chicks for sale or something that's going on that we think is important. We put it right up on our web page. Puts it up for a day, takes it down again. Um, web pages are not very expensive, and it's the way you got to go. It's important. This is our, our main web page. Um, pheasant.com, we've actually, it has what's called flash on there, which means it's a rotating banner. There's my blog. It's, it's right, it's advertising the blog. We have a forum, which we've really had trouble getting going. Forums are very good ways. Chris was telling me how important he feels a forum is to your ability to get your site up higher, because the more activity through a forum, the better. 
Uh, become a fan. We've advertised that right on our web page that we want you to go and it has a, if you click here, it'll take you right to the Facebook page. Recipes, we have people that are coming to our page obviously to get food and, th and then we also have another site called GameBirdHunts.com which is a site that helps you find a place to hunt. Um, there, the seminar. Um, we've had that up there. How many people found out about our seminar because they saw it on the web page? Anybody? Oh, that's the only way you knew about this was from that. Cool. Wow. I, had, I, you know, I didn't know, but I assumed we did other marketing ways. I mean, we mailed things out. So you, from Peru, that's... 2010, you... Cool. Um, we found out we do tracking of where people go when they go to our sites. There's something called Google Analytics, and you with through analytics, it isn't something you have to pay for. It's just part of you just sign on for it. Through Google Analytic, Analytics, we can find out where people go on our web page. The number one page they go to is they go to prices and they check prices. That's the first place they go by far. It tells us what the demographics of people are coming to our site. They're not really coming to look around. They want to know what stuff costs. That's pretty crazy. Um, so we quickly went to putting a banner right up, right on the main page to say, rather than going through all those different tabs, and under the various tabs up there, I mean, there's all sorts of other information. Um, you know, we have history, success stories, we, all sorts that people want to order, and that's the reason we went to um, getting online. We also found that people want to know about the farm, and I was trying to, to think about it, because I know that, like, coal, if you come to our farm and you see it, you will have an impression of our farm, but from the web page, you can't get that much of an impression of our farm, so I was really trying to think of how can I show the farm to people, so I hired a helicopter, and I hired a guy with a uh, camera, and then I decided to go along too, which was really cool. And I sat in the middle of the helicopter, the pilot was here, and the guy was hanging out, and we took video of all of our operations from the sky. Has anyone ever seen that? A few of you, okay. And um, the narration isn't the best, I need to get it narrated better, but we took video, aerial video of all the farm and put it up there and are finding that people are really looking at that. It's just trying to get the idea out of what, what we have to offer and getting it to people is, is, is really important. Another issue we had was the, the trying to identify who's buying from us, who, who are the people. And we have such a diverse group of people that buy from us. We have people from rural Minnesota well, I mean, that's where you are, in, in, you know, out in a small community in Minnesota. And then we have um, someone who lives in the 40th floor of a building in downtown Los Angeles in a condominium that wants to cook pheasant for dinner. And we had one website that was for you and for that lawyer's wife on the 40th floor of the condominium in Los Angeles, and it wasn't working. We, we knew that. We had, the way we knew it wasn't working was, um, we weren't getting a lot of orders that were consummated. People, would, especially on the, a recipe, on the food side, would get to the very last page and they would, they would drop out. They wouldn't place the order. So we separated the two, I don't know, three or four years ago. And now pheasant.com is for live pheasants and pheasant for dinner is for food. And things have gone a lot better. So another thing just to mention in marketing is you really got to figure out who your audience is and then get your website oriented to that audience. So if some of you perhaps are maybe a preserve and also a game farm, you should have two websites. One for your preserve, one for your game farm. Don't try to combine things. You can have different audiences. The other thing too, by having more than one, audi more than one web page, they're cross-linked. And again, you get the traffic back and forth. So you're getting the value out of it out of there too. Um, on this, if, has it, people been to this website? Few of you? Not too many, a few. And that's because this isn't your earlier deal. But we have a chef of the month on here and we get a chef that buys our bird and we put them on here, put a bio on here and you know, it's a whole different animal. 
but we have lots of recipes. We were trying to figure out how could we get recipes. So we just posted on here that we had a recipe contest and that we would have some people evaluate the recipes and we gave some pretty nice prizes. And I think we got 100 recipes submitted and we put them all on. We just put them all 100 on and then we had picked a couple that were really good. But the information was free. We didn't have to pay for it. We just needed to get people to, to respond. Um, we've also started doing something what we call e-blast. There's something else that's called constant contact, I think, or contactology. Basically what it is is we maintain a database of email addresses. I believe, Sarah, do we have email addresses for all these people? I, we should, right? Yes, okay. Yes, besides the UK, yes. We will get that fixed. Um, but we maintain databases of email addresses. And if we have something that comes up that at last minute um, we have somebody cancel chicks or we have too many cock chicks sold one week and we have extra hens, we can write up an e-blast and literally it, it just pick the, the email list and just hit a button and it sends that email to all those people. I'm sure all of you probably know that you can do this, but I think it's just like crazy. How many email addresses do we have? I think six or seven thousand. I think, and that's not very big in the in the world. I mean, there's companies that have like a million, but these are verified email addresses of people that have contacted us. These aren't email addresses that we bought. These are people that have given me their email address or they bought from us, and we have it segregated into different groups, like people that have bought food, people who bought mature birds, people that are buying chicks. And with this one click of it, and we try not to send too many. I mean, we don't want to overdo it. It also gives us a report of who spammed us, who doesn't want it, um, who has rejected the message, and who's opened the message. And if we want to go and look, we can actually see how many people are opening up, how it was received. And there's times now that Sarah or one of the staff in the office will have, let's say, a few thousand hen chicks for the following week, and they'll put it out on an e-blast. And I think it'd be fair to say that it's common. What within three or four hours, they're gone. It just, it just, it's incredible how it works. People know that they're coming. They know that there might be an e-blast coming. They've known that we've had it. We usually try to do it on the same day each week, and but it's quick and easy. And the only cost of it is we have, do have a cost to the company. They maintain, they have the database is not maintained on site. It's more like it's in a, I guess it's a cloud is what it's maintained in. I think that's the right term. Um, and it, it, it is a really valuable thing for us in our business. You all know what YouTube is. And do, you, do they know what YouTube is? No? Peru, you know what YouTube is. Oliver, you know what YouTube is. Alan Pearson, YouTube. Yep, yep. Um, YouTube is not country by country. From our, it's worldwide, right? It's the same YouTube. Yes, it's one YouTube. So we uh, we just signed up for a YouTube channel. It's like it doesn't mean we. Have, I don't think it costs us anything. We just have one. I don't even know what our YouTube channel is. Um, but. If you put in McFarland Pheasant, it'll bring it up. And we post all the videos of everything, just anything, we, just the most innocuous of things. Like we filmed guys catching birds, or how to peep a pheasant, or how to fill a fe feeder and have the argway, just all this stuff. We'll post all the videos from this um, seminar. And it's incredible how many people go and see them. And the other part is that all those people, that's all cross-linked back to pheasant.com. It all comes back. My philosophy, all right, I'm, I'm 56 years old. How long am I going to run the farm? Maybe, if I'm lucky, maybe 10 more years. I told my wife the other day, maybe I'd run it for 20 more years, and she was like, she didn't like that. But life is short. Why, you know, th this isn't rocket science, you know, it isn't like, it's knowledge that we have that we figured out it's really cool that you built your pen from our video because I think we have a good way of building pens and you didn't end up having to do it a way that failed you can get right to the point we're at and same for you and why not what's the difference I mean if a guy's building a pen the way we build it in Peru does that cost our farm anything does it pull away from our market does it hurt us in any way zero actually by him doing that now he's sitting there and now we're friends, right? And maybe you'll figure out something 
that we don't know how to do or maybe figure out something how to do it better and tell us and same for you. So that's, that's really neat. I like that. That's something for me to feel good about.